Baseball has always been a big part of my life. I've been a Yankee fan ever since I was a kid. Played baseball video games all the way back in 2006. Competed in Little League for 10 years. It even played wiffle ball in my backyard with my friends. Now, I make videos about MLB The Show. But there's one form of baseball that's entirely new to me. Blitzball. Blitzball has been kind of blowing up these last few years and I never really expected to play it. Well, that was until last year. I got owned by all of these MLB The Show players, and the internet let me hear it. Well, that's enough of hurting my own self-esteem. In 30 days, I'll be flying out to Seattle for the All-Star Game, and we'll be playing Blitzball yet again. I'll be spending this month training and learning the ins and outs of Blitzball. So when I play these YouTubers again, I don't look like a doofus. So this is the setup. I've got a slow pit. That's not a good start. You have the slow pitch device right there. So this was the start. Going outside, taking some swings, and really practicing baseball in some way, shape, or form for the first time in at least 10 years. Oh, that's a hack. Those would be taters, all right. And I even whipped out the regular bat and got some swings in. But we were taking it slow. Day number one in the books. So I'd continue through week one, getting some swings in. I was just trying to get a feel for things, not trying to really get better yet. And as you can see, I had some points where I looked good and some points where I looked really bad. Uh -uh. And I decided to throw for the first time on day number three. And I realized why I was so easy to hit last time. Well, holy Christ, oh, perfect, perfect. I decided to take a big jump and learn to throw two blitzball pitches. I started off by lobbing in a curveball, and I was able to get some spin on it. And then I decided to try the screwball. To throw this pitch well, you had to throw it sidearm, and I've never done this before, but this turned out way better than I expected. You could see the pitch move in the arm side to the right, and you could see it had some drop to it. And the feeling I had of learning this pitch and seeing it be effective was great. Even though I was far from perfect, this feeling of practice turning out good is a feeling oh, I haven't right felt there. in 10 years since I've stopped playing baseball. That's a good start. We reached one week, and that last day really encouraged me to keep practicing pitching. So after warming up for a bit, I decided to practice the knuckle drop. Unfortunately, this pitch was not a pitch I learned as well. So I moved on to practicing my curveball, and today we actually saw a lot of improvement. I realized that I just had to throw harder to get a little bit more spin on it. So you could actually see that pitch move to the left, which I was feeling pretty good about. So after practicing the screwball for a little bit, I decided to give it 100%. Like I was pitching against a real batter for the first time, but there was a bit of a problem. I was fighting my body since I was putting myself through this bit of a workout, but I mustered up the energy and decided to pitch 100%. You could see the pitches were moving, I was hitting some spots, and I was feeling really good about the pitching after our first week. So for week two, I wanted to focus on the bats to get going. So I was taking a bunch of swings and started to make some adjustments while some of them definitely weren't good i was working bit by bit to find that good swing and by the time this session ended i was feeling really nice with the bat that felt good and i even decided to go live on twitch this tea session was really nice i just didn't really have to focus on the timing of anything i was just thinking about my form but I did kind of embarrass myself. No, 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 you saw nothing. You saw nothing, okay? I also found out everyone in my chat was a hidden coach. Use that lower body. Oh, trust me, I know. We're working on it, Mikey. I'm trying to get good. I'm sorry. And I felt very good after this session. Well, until the very end, of course. Ah. I took the advice of the Twitch chat and decided to work on getting my lower body involved in my swing. And there were a lot of goofy looking swings in this session here today, but I really just wanted to focus on better form by the end of it. And I felt like my swings were better, but it's really tough to tell, especially when hitting just soft toss or off a tee. I don't really know if this was really helping. So I went to throw and I ran into another problem. My arm kind of hurts, you might not throw. Ah.
That's not good. Um, alright. That one hurt the arm, I'm not gonna lie. At this point, my arm was killing me. Ah. And I started to even wonder, why am I making this video? Why am I recording I myself in my yard just killing my arm? Okay. I found the arm slot that wouldn't hurt my arm, right. and the works. motivation came right back. Right. I spent so long this day throwing pitch after pitch, trying to get worked. it down, that it even got to sunset, and two hours flew by just like that. So I kept labbing it up out here, trying to get it down, and after I got a bit tired, I decided to rest up for the final week before our games. It was finally here. No more practice, it was time to put it all on the field. 30 days of training has all led up to this moment. And for today's games, we would be playing 2v2. Two innings, and every at bat would have five balls and two strikes. So we had to sit out game number one, and we would watch the former roommates go up against the two Seattle natives. And Anson Swan were off to a great start, walking a bunch and hitting some backside singles, and they would eventually get the bases loaded. But the Holy Grail would bounce back on the mound and manage to strand those runners, and this would still remain a nothing nothing game ants dominated last time we played blitzball but he was in a bit of trouble this time oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. giving up two home runs in this first inning ants and swan would go down quickly in the second and we would be playing the seattle natives if we managed to win game one but it was time for us to play. Me and Ray Cheesy would be going up against the two Minnesotans. Let's just say I didn't start the way I wanted to. But very quickly this inning would turn on its head because the Minnesotans couldn't throw any strikes. This was Thuni's first time playing Blitzball and he couldn't find the zone so we would just take walk after walk after walk. Gomes would enter the game, and after striking out Ray, he thought he'd found it. But he eventually also lost his own, so we ended up taking a bunch of walks to take a 3-0 lead. And I started to swing aggressively, and he'd strike me out to end the inning. Now it was time for me to pitch, and I was feeling good. Oh, yes, it did. The curveball was even working. I started off with a two-pitch strikeout. Next at bat, I would get Gomer to ground out the short. And in the next at bat against Dooney, I struggled to find a zone, but those pitches were still looking good. I bounced back with a curveball. But after falling behind 4-1, I still had one good pitch in me. Gomer would struggle to find a zone yet again, but I came up aggressive, swinging at the first couple pitches, but I'd battle this at bat to the very end. But he still had some sauce. He dotted me the great fastball. And then Gomer found it, throwing two dots to Ray, and then diced me up for my second at bat in the inning. Yo, what was that? We'd enter the second inning with a 3 0 lead, and I was feeling good to start this inning, but I started to have to battle with myself and find the zone. But I'd end up walking the leadoff bat. Next at bat, I had a chance to strike out Thune. I try to throw that same pitch to Gilbert. And... That's a foul ball. And I was one strike away from getting my second out. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I know my body blocked that, but he check swung there, and that was the second out of the inning. I was one out away from the win, and Duty was gonna battle. But lucky for me, I had that old reliable screwball. So I was feeling good on the mound, and that would end game number one. After watching the two losing teams play, it was time for our final game. Everything at stake. And I came out swinging this game. But that would be a foul ball. But I would battle this at bat and end up taking a walk. Ray would come up and hit a single. And I would have a chance to give us an early lead. And I would absolutely crush this ball, but the wind would blow it foul. 
Oh yeah, and I did that for a second swing in a row. But I would hit a hard grounder and get on base with a single. And now was our chance to take a lead. Ray would walk to give us a one run lead, but I would ground out right after. Ray would walk in another run to make it two nothing. And I would hit this as a single to make it a three nothing game. But Day on the mound would find the zone and he would bounce back and get Ray to ground out. And after hitting those foul ball homers, I just really wanted that homer and swung at a bad pitch. Now it was my time to pitch and I was definitely struggling to start. This would be a double to get runners on second and third. I finally got hit and I was actually rattled. So I would just five pitch walk to load the bases. But there was hope. I found the zone, this at bat against Slick, and I got a three pitch strikeout. And then I bounced back against Day and throw a two pitch strikeout. But right as I found it, I lost it yet again, and I would throw again a five pitch walk to Slick, and this would be a 3 1 game. So here I was again, bases loaded still, Ooh. started off with a great first pitch, but Day was battling and he took three straight balls and at this point I didn't want to walk another runner, so I threw the screwball. That was a grand slam to give them a 5-3 lead. The old reliable screwball did not work there, and since we had a five run inning maximum, we'd be coming up with only one final chance to score two. And even though I battled, Slick got me the great fastball. He was feeling it on the mound, and Ray would come up and get dotted away. And I was our final out. And I was not going to go down without a fight. I battled this at bat to get on base with a walk. And Ray was showing off his blitzball experience and also fought in an at bat. And we had two straight walks. I was now the go ahead runner. And yet again, I was going to battle to the end. I fouled off some really tough pitches. And I would fight to a full count. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And we would lose Ooh, yes, five to did. three. My 30 day journey was over, but this journey taught me a lot about myself. I've been a creator for five years now. And even during this video, I asked myself, why do I even do it? And for a long time this year, I haven't been able to answer that question. But while recording myself playing Blitzball in my yard, I felt like a kid again. The kid who just loved baseball, whether it was Little League, wiffle ball, or video games. You should feel like a kid every time you play it. And I get to be that kid every day when I make videos. I've realized that my purpose here is to share this love for baseball. So whether I try to learn blitz ball or try to score a thousand runs, then will be the show. I hope my videos show why <laughs> baseball is the best. And maybe if I play these guys in blitz ball again, I'll have my revenge.